classes we have. Please turn on your cameras. I want to see your lovely faces. So welcome to the class. Hello, Montoya, Galmichi, Santiago de Jesus, Bernardo. So they're only the same people. I don't see any any woman around over here. So um, I think we are all guys so far. So welcome to the class. And today we are going to the last class we discussed the Newton Raphson method. If you remember, we were talking about let me just actually share my screen again. So um, if you remember the Newton Raphson method. We actually were discussing up to. Yeah, yeah, we actually saw the multiplicity. We actually saw the multiplicity, so there is there is no problem with the multiplicity. So we completed the Newton Raphson explanation. Today we are going to move to a different method. So in the Newton Raphson evaluation, we were using the derivative, right? So essentially we use the derivative and we use. Let me just share the screen. And we use the, the derivative in general to obtain to obtain the solution. So if we go back to the Newton Raphson equation. So you saw that the Newton Raphson actually uses what? Uses the function itself and then the derivative. But what happened when we don't have the derivative? So there are some functions that are actually very hard to, to get the derivative. So there are functions that are complicated by itself, so we cannot get the derivative. So we have to move to a different method. So in this class, we are going to see a new method. And this method is called the second method. And also we are going to discuss its variations. OK, so in general, this method, as I said, we do not use the derivative. So at the very beginning of the Newton, Newton's Ram method uh, explanation or uh, presentation, we said that the Newton Raphson method converges very fast in comparison with methods such as the bisection and the FPI methods. So in general, we said that this is because the neutron Raphson had a characteristic characteristic that we named um, quadratically convergent method, if you remember. So it is achieved um, that, you know, fasting method or fast method because it uses more information. So the more information we use, in this case, the derivative, the faster that also the, the, the convergency is going to take place. But in some cases, as I said, the derivative is not available. So the second method that we're going to see in this class is a good, a good substitution for the Newton's method um, that we saw in the previous class. It replaces the tangent line which is the tangent line, remember, is the derivative by itself with an approximation called the secant line. So in previous, previously in the, in the Newton Raphson method, we use the tangent line, if you remember. So in this method, we are not using the secant line, we are using something called, sorry, we are not using the tangent line, we are using another definition that we called or named the second line or la secante. And this method converges almost as, as quickly as the Newton Raphson's. OK, so that's very important. We also are going to discuss different variation of the second method. We are going to discuss the false position method. We are going to discuss the Mueller's method. And we are also discuss the inverse quadratic interpolation. So we have three methods inside of the second method. So it means like we have this one and we have three different variations. OK, at the end we will close actually this unit, which is the, the unit of the. Um, where we are talking about only transcendental and algebraic equations. We're going to close it with a very small discrete description that we name as a brand's method which is a hybrid method which combines the best features of iterative and bracketing methods 
So you'll see that we're going to actually do it in MATLAB that the branch method is actually using all the methods that we saw to actually approximate the best routes available for the equation that we are studying. OK, so do you have any questions so far? Any questions? No, perfect. OK, good. So then we continue. So the second method is pretty much like this Newton's method, OK? But replaces, as I said before, the derivative by a different quotient. Geometrically, the tangent line is replaced by a line through the two last known gases. So in general, this is what we call the secant line, which is the if you have actually a line, for example, and then you have two different points around it or close to that line, the intersection point between the line that you are studying, which is the function by itself, and the line that is actually passing through, so it's called the secant. I don't, if you remember, we actually have, um, cuando vieron álgebra, si recuerdan en álgebra estudiamos lo que era la secante. ¿Se acuerdan? Y ustedes tenían una secante y por ahí tenían que completar un método que era como de a los 100, 180 grados, ¿se acuerdan? Teníamos dos secantes y prácticamente la suma de todos los, todos los ángulos dentro de ese secante era igual a qué? A 180 grados. No sé si recuerdan por ahí eso. Anyhow, so in general, if we actually replace and use, and use this definition in the Newton's formula, the Newton's formula, remember that half, if you, you remember we have xi plus one equal to xi minus the function divided by the derivative. Right? So, but in general, we also saw that the, if you remember that you saw like g1, g1 minus g0 equal to x0 minus x, sorry, x1 minus x0. So in general, was the definition of the, 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 the derivative or the slope of the function. Remember that we discussed that in the previous classes when we, when I show you the, the equation of the line. So we saw that it was, it, it, this was x1 minus, sorry, x2 minus x1 divided by, sorry, no, no, no. It's g2 minus g1 divided by x2 minus g minus x1. So that was actually the m value, which is the slope. So if we take this approximation and we substituted this in the Newton's um, Raphson's um, equations, so we can actually obtain something similar. So we take this one and then substitute it, and this is pretty much what we get. So in general, do you, do you know that if you put it, you put it here, which is the m, so you're going to get the inverse. So you get the inverse, which is actually xi minus xi minus 1, which is this one, divided by fxi minus fxi minus 1. So this is the Newton's formula, but this, instead of having the derivative, which is this one, we are putting the concept of the derivative used in the line formula or the line equation or the distance between two lines or the interpolation, the linear interpolation curve. So we, let's go back to the Newton's method. So for example, if I take this, let me just actually, I'm getting a little bit of, of um, problem with the camera. So if we, if we go back to Newton's equation, so this was a derivative, right? And if we go about actually even further, I think I show you in the line formula, this is the line. Remember that this is the line formula and the derivative in general, was equal to, as I said, x g2 minus g1 divided by x2 minus x1. So this is the derivative. If we put it in here, this formula, we obtain what we obtain in here. So it's exactly the same thing. So it's very, very easy. And then we just have the variation. We have to provide two initial guesses. In this case, we provide two initial guesses, x0 and x1, and then we have to do this for i from 1 to 2 to up, up to n values that is equal to the number of iterations that you want to 
uh, that you want to use to obtain the, ac the, uh, the accuracy that you are looking for. OK, so in general, unlikely, um, you, you remember that we have studied the fixed iteration point and the method, the Newton's method. So now we are actually starting with two guesses. Remember that for fixed iteration point, we only use one, 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 um, one guess. For the Newton's method, we also use one guess. For this one, we are starting actually with two guesses. So this is different. So we need we need a little bit more of, of, of information, or at least at least a little bit more of, you know, um, initial conditions. It can be shown that under the assumption that the second method converges to R. Remember that R is equal to the root. And if the derivative of the function in R is different than zero, the approximate error for the second method in this case is equal to what we studied previously in the in the um, Newton's formula. If you remember, this is the thing that we studied previously. It's pretty much the same. So this holds and this can be simplified to this expression, which is actually if you're using the two error conditions, so we just have to actually make it equal to this. So if we do some some operations, we at the end we obtain that the value of alpha is equal to 1.62. Okay, so the convergency of the second method to simple roots is called superlinear. So we are not talking about linearly convergency, which is actually the case for the for the bisection and fixed iteration point. So the fixed point iteration, sorry, method. So they are linearly convergent. And then we discuss that Newton's method is actually quadratically convergent method. So this is the fast one, the fastest one. This is the lowest one, or this is the, the slowest one. And then we have something in between. We have something that we call super linear. So it's something in between these two. So even though sounds actually super linear, sounds more even, you know, like more understanding or more like, you know, like more super than quadratically convergent. So superlinear means that it's between linearly and quadratically convergent. Why? Because if we analyze the convergency of the Newton method, if you remember for low, very low values of the slope, so the Newton method actually converges very fast. And, and this alpha value is not actually as low as the Newton's um, um, Raphson um, method. So this is actually is low. So if you actually get 1.62 minus 1, you get 0.62. So it's 0.62, which is kind of okay. It's, it's it's pretty decent, but for the for the Newton's method, we saw that we obtain values even very close to zero. So this is why this is this this is super linear because it's between the linear convergency, which was about 0 0.8, 0 0.7, 0. Uh, 0.9, very close to one, and then we have the quadratically convergency method that we're very close to zero for the case of the Newton's method, method equation. Okay, so that's something to think about it. So let's actually start doing examples. So let's start with the first example. So if we apply this for the first example, we say that we apply the second method with two starting guesses. So in general, I'm, in, in the examples, I'm going to give you the starting guesses for the sake of sake of the class, right? Because we are not able to to have like three hours to obtain the solution, right? But we are asking to actually obtain the solution of the x cube cubic x, sorry, plus x minus one. It's a very simple polynomial that we used in the class a lot, actually. If you think about the formula that we we mentioned before, this formula right here. So we obtain the formula that xi plus 1 is equal to xi minus xi, which is the fx. Remember this is fx here. fx, which is actually fx here, x to the power 3i plus xi minus i, which is this one, fx minus xi minus xi minus 1, and then xi 
to the power three plus xi minus once again. If you remember, this one is actually this one. This one was actually the function evaluated in xi minus one. So in general, is this is going to be xi to the power three xi minus one plus xi minus one. So this is just evaluated evaluating the formula. Okay. So if you see, this is actually pretty much what we have. Oops, sorry. This is pretty much what we saw in this formula. Pretty much the same. So we just have to identify that this one with this minus one and this one with plus one is going to be just cancel out. OK, so we just obtain this equation. So obtaining the first solution, we are seeing that we have x zero and x one. So we provide two initial cases. So why? Because x zero is equal to in general. X zero is equal to x i minus one, this value and x i equal to one is equal to one. So in this case, x i is going to be equal to one and x i minus one is going to be equal to zero. So x two then is going to be equal to one, one minus. In general, if we actually replace these values, x i is going to be equal to x one. So one plus one minus one. One plus one minus one minus one when with this one is going to be cancelled out and you get one. And then one minus x i minus one is one minus zero. And then divided by x i, which is equal to one plus one. And then you have this one, which is zero. And then this one is equal to zero. And then it's going to be one plus one minus zero. Right? You have one half for x two. And then x three, if you want to do it. So think of Pay attention to this. So we have one half. <clears throat> so this one half is already up. It's already actually what we name X2. So X2 is going to become actually the XI. So if you see here, XI is going to be equal to one half. And then minus three halves. Why two halves? So let's actually compute it. XI is equal to who, to what? XI is equal to one half right to the power three plus one half minus one. Cuanto da eso? Aquí sería un medio a la calcubo más un medio menos uno. Cuanto da? Aquí por supuesto un medio al cubo. Cuanto da? Me dar un octavo, ¿no? Un octavo. ¿eh? Más un medio. Menos uno, ¿cuánto da? Por tres octavos. Okay, por ejemplo, si aquí le hacemos x1, que sería, en este caso sería xi is equal to one half minus, in this case, how much is going to get? i minus one is going to be one. Well, how much is that one? One half, one half, which is this one minus one, right? This is the one. So how much is this one? ¿Cuánto es esto? Si ya sabemos que xi es el nuevo un medio y xi minus one es igual a uno. Menos un medio, profe. Menos un medio. Todo eso ya multiplicado o esto acá. Aquí es x a, ¿eh? no vayan a confundirlo con x, x a menos uno. OK, plus. How much is that? Is minus one half? 
You sure? Remember, if you actually see this process, so X2, we're using X0 and 1 as our Xi and Xi minus 1. So for this one, if this is Xi, this is 1 minus 1 to the power 3 is equal to 1, right? Plus 1 minus 1. So these two are going to be canceled out, and then this is going to be equal to x to the power 3, sorry, xi, 1 a la tercera, which is actually equal to 1, right? And then this is going to be 1 minus 0 because it's 1 minus 0. So 1 minus 0, boop, boop, then this is fine. And then the other one, which is actually x to the power 3, right, is equal to xi, 1 plus 1 minus 1 plus zero, right? So this is gonna be become zero here, right? Or one minus zero. So this is equal to one then plus one. And then this is gonna be minus zero and it's gonna become one half, right? Because this is zero, this is zero, so zero. This is one, this is one, this is one. So now this X2, of course, is gonna be Xi plus one. So, but in the in in, in the in this one is gonna become xi. So one is equal to xi one half minus then one half to the power three plus one half minus one. Quanto da eso? So you said like 0. 0.5 to the power three plus 0. 0.5 minus one is equal to minus three, three eighths, three octavos. ¿Sí les dio eso? Sí, sí da eso, profe. Okay, so we're clear now. So one half, then xi, one half minus one, because this is going to be equal to the xi minus one. And then, of course, the same thing here. So we have this is going to be one half to the power three plus one, one half, minus, this is going to become 1 to the power 3, right, plus 1. And then this is going to become like 3, 3, 3 eighths minus 1. So, and this at the end is going to be 7, 7 elevenths. Huh. Okay? So, like this store. So, but let's, let's go and use Excel to make this clear, because I think this is not as clear as I want it. So, let's go and use Excel, so um, this is Excel here. So I have the exercise one. I, I, this is the one, right? So this is the one. So I started. Can you see the Excel file? The pueden ver? Good. So remember that my X0 and X1 is equal to what? To 0 and 1. I'm going to do it right here. So I'm going to call a column 1 and XI. So XI. Okay. I said this is going to be 0, 1, 2, 3. And then, you know, it's going to be kind of like even I did it up to 10. So first, this is going to be 0 and this is going to be 1. Those are my first guesses, right? So if I follow if I follow this equation, so I'm saying that xi 1, right? minus I'm going to go up in a parenthesis is going to be xi which is equal to this one to the power 3. Well, just let me find the Oh my god, this is a new so let me find the, 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 um, the el gorrito because this is this is not this is a Spanish computer. ¿Alguno de ustedes sabe cómo sacar el gorrito en un teclado en español? 
No, I see it, I think. No, this is not. El que, profe. Okay. Yeah. Ah. El so control is... al y la tecla donde está el, el triangulito. Ah, ya, yeah. ya le salió. Yeah. Sí, sí, profe. Ok, so this is, this is to the power 3 plus plus xi, which is actually e12. e12, right? Minus 1. So this is actually, this is actually the first, this first condition. And then times, times, parenthesis, and this is going to be equal to xi, which is e12, minus, going to be e11, right? e11, this one. So I close it, and then I'm going to actually divide it. I'm going to divide this one by what I have on the bottom. So on the bottom I have xi, which is equal to e12, e12 to the power 3 <clears throat> plus, plus e12, right, again, minus parenthesis is going to be e11, e11, Right to the power three plus plus e eleven. Right? Is that right? Están de acuerdo que es eso? Profe, pero por qué en la última aparece el menos uno? Where? En el x i al cubo menos 1 más x i menos 1. ¿En esta? Sí. ¿Y porque así es la fórmula. If we go back to the presentation, then we have this is the formula. If we go back further, we actually see that this is the formula. This is the formula because we have that this is going to be f my f minus f x i minus one. Oh, sorry, this is from so f x i times x i minus f i f x i minus one. So you're talking about this term in general, this one. So if no. you say f f x i minus f x i minus one. So if you substitute, this is fx i, FX I. so fx i is going this one plus this one plus this one, and then you say minus fx i minus one. You get this one plus this one minus one, but you have the sign equal minus one here, and you have one plus minus one. So this is going to become positive, and this is going to be negative. So they're going to be cancel out. So you get actually this in general. So you just actually make a make a make some explanation. So did, did you contesté tu pregunta o lo hacemos en el en el pizarrón? No te preocupes, podemos hacerlo en el pizarrón. No, sí, profe. Me refiero de que como pues los valores sustituidos pensé que por el menos uno cambiaban al sustituir los valores. Sí, claro, menos uno cambiaban porque si sustituyo los valores en este caso Siempre el x menos 1 es el 0. Y el x y, en este caso, va a ser el 1. ¿Estás de acuerdo? O sea, cuando tú veas, como tú tienes, tú necesitas dos valores para poder correr esta ecuación, necesitas tanto x y y x y menos 1. x y va a ser igual a 1. Y el otro va a ser x y menos 1 va a ser igual a 0. Entonces, nada más por eso puso el primero para, porque x sí es 1 y menos 1 es 0, ¿no? Eh, ¿En dónde? ¿En, ¿En cuál? ¿En este? Sí, por, en ese, que es el 0. Ese es 0, exactamente, sí, pero sí. lo pongo, ah. lo, a pesar de lo, lo, lo pongo para que, sea, para que me ayude a la hora de, de hacer el siguiente, el siguiente paso. Ok, profe, 
Gracias, gracias. Ya entendí. Pero este es cero. Este es cero y este es cero también, por supuesto. Todos estos son cero. Los rojos son ceros. Entonces, aquí da punto 5. Y prácticamente, si no me equivoco, y si estoy bien, quiero pensar que esto va a salir correctamente. Ahí está. Así sale. Y se dan cuenta, en 10 aproximaciones, en menos de hecho, en 6 aproximaciones, yo tengo mi solución. Ahora, sustituyan puntos 68, 2, 3, 3 en esta ecuación. Por favor. Profe, me da punto catorce setenta y nueve. Punto catorce setenta y nueve. Eso debe ser casi igual a cero. Pero punto sesenta y ocho dos tres tres al cubo más punto sesenta y ocho dos tres tres más uno. Ah, perdón. No, menos uno. No, me da 5.26 por 10 a la menos 6. Algo hiciste mal ahí. También a mí me da eso. Pero sí. Me da 5.26 por 10 a la menos 6. Sí, sí me eso da, profe. Gracias. Perdón, lo tenía en radianes. <risa> eso no importa en radianes, no está haciendo ninguna trigonométrica. Ah, sí, sí da eso, 5.26 por 10 a la menos 6. Listo. Bueno, entonces ya vimos la, la eficiencia del, del, del método secante. So, so the solution in general is actually puntos um, .682G3 for this, this solution, okay? So, but let's practice more. So, let's practice with this, these equations. Por favor, tómale un screenshot para que ustedes lo tengan y lo podamos llevar a Excel. Yo voy a trabajar los primeros dos y ustedes trabajan los últimos dos. Yo voy a hacer el dos y el tres y ustedes hacen el cuatro y el cinco. ¿Les parece? Avísenme cuando tengan el screenshot para que pueda comenzar a irme Excel. Ya, por favor. Listo, profe. Okay. So, in Excel, of course, I have actually, you know, all the already the exercises um, solved. So, in general, I would tell like, okay. So, I have this this formula, which is my formula that I already know, and I have and I have my, my equation, and I have my initial guesses. So my initial guesses, remember, are, are x0 equal to 0. I'm going to actually create here another, just for the sake of the, you know, you see that it, this is not, you know, anything unreal. I'm doing some magic. This is a very efficient method, and it's a very simple method. I just need to actually solve one, and then everything is going to run properly. So I have the equation. I have the guesses. So in the guesses, because this equation is a little bit long, so I, I just decided to actually separate it or separate it into different columns. So if you think about it, so I said like this is xi minus one, this is xi, this is here fxi minus one, this one, this term, this is fxi right here, and xi plus 1, of course, is going to become what I'm actually calculating, right? So in general, this is what I'm going to be calculating. So this is this is c9, which is xi, minus e9, which is actually 
the formula that I already have XFX, FXI. And then I have the, the B9, which is actually this one, the C9, which is equal to XI minus XI minus one, which is this one divided by FXI, which is this one minus FXI minus one, which is this one. So in general, I just simplify the equation to make it more simpler. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. So let's just do it by again. So this is zero and this is my, my guesses. Zero and minus 0.1. Minus 0.1. Okay, all right, so I have this one. So I know that then my FXI plus one minus one is gonna be this equation, this equation evaluated in FXI minus one as I did it here, for example, here. So, but in general, I said like this is equal to cosinus, cosinus of Fxi plus two times sinus of Xi minus one plus Xi minus one square, right? So this is the evaluation of my formula in Xi minus one, this one, this one. Enter, so I got is equal to one. So now I have to evaluate my formula, my equation, this one, this term, this formula or this equation in Xi. So I do the same, but I usually do it with here. So now I evaluated cosinus of this one plus two times sinus of this one plus this one to the power two. So do you have any questions so far? Hello? No, profe, no. No, yo no. no, no so. so then you have, this is going to be equal to the formula. The formula is equal to Xi minus, minus Fxi, right? Fxi times Xi minus Xi, this one Xi minus Xi minus one, which is this one, right? And then doom, this is close the parenthesis, divided by parenthesis Fxi, which is this one, minus Fxi minus one. So, and then I close the parenthesis, and this is what I get. So, but in general, in general, remember that we have to update my equation. So, which one is going to be xi minus 1? xi minus 1 is going to become equal to this one, right? And xi is going to become equal to this one. And then I can do the same for this one. Boom. Then I got the same thing here. <coughs> and if I actually do things properly, because this is going to become already programmed by Excel, so I'm just going to do boom. And then I see that I have my solution after this solution is I have four decimal places of accuracy, so this is my solution. So let's go make this a number. So this is what I get. And now, por favor, ustedes sustituyen this value in esta equation. Este valor in esta equation.
Me da menos 3.45 por 10 a la menos 6. So it's actually a very, a very, it's very close to zero, right? Okay. So it's very close to zero, so it means like we get a good, a good accuracy of my solution. So do you have any question about the example? Any questions? Pretty easy, right? Yo no. Yo bien. Pretty easy. Just let me actually delete this because I don't want to have double things for later use. This is just to verify that things can be done from the, from the very beginning, right? So. Let's go to the exercise three. So the exercise three, if you remember, is actually fx equal to x cosine of x. So let's do it again. It's actually pretty much the same thing. So I'm going to do again i, a column equal to i. Well, actually, I'm going to copy this so it doesn't have to be that complex. So remember, this is going to be my iteration numbers. So I'm just saying that I'm going to have seven iterations because I already solved this exercise. So my initial guesses are 0.5 and 0.7. So the solution is, they, they say like it's between 0.5 and 0.7, but this is not always true for this method. It's not the same as the others. So my first solution is 0.5. Point seven. So those are my initial guesses. So fx minus one, of course, this is going to be equal to x x plus plus cosinus of x minus one. Sorry. So to make sure that you understood this. So, and then I have it here. So now I have to do it with xi. So I'm just gonna actually drop, you know, drop it, boom, and this is what I got. So this one, x plus cosinus of this one, but using xi. And then I only need to apply the formula. That's why it's very easy. This method is one of the easiest ones. So this is equal to xi, which is equal to xi minus to this one fxi times parenthesis xi minus xi minus one. Sorry, I think I made a mistake. So this is xi minus xi minus one, right? Divided by, oops, divided by fxi, which is this one, minus fxi minus one. So this is the formula I have here. So xi, which is this one, minus fxi, which is this one, times xi minus fxi minus one, divided by xi, no, fxi, sorry, fxi, which is this one, minus fxi minus one. So enter, so I got the solution. And again, I said, so this is gonna become this one, and this is going to become this one. I run it again for all the calculations. So now that this is actually coded in Excel, so boom, done. So I got the same number of accuracy for decimal places, and my solution is equal to this, this one. So please substitute this value in this equation. Sustituyan este valor en esta ecuación. 
para que vean que no mentimos. And tell me the solutions. Da menos 8.14 por 10 a la menos 6. So very low value, right? It's a very small value, so it's almost zero. So we get a good precision as well. So now I'm going to clean this up because I already know it's already on the top. And then you have to do, you have to do the exercises, sorry, number example four and five. You're gonna, I'm going to give you, I think it, I think seven minutes should be fine. So I'm going to give you until 11 to actually get four and five exercises for the exercise four and exercise five. Okay, done. So I'm going to give you that time. So this one and this one. Please complete the exercises. You already have the screenshot, so I'm going to put just the example three for you to actually guide you through the exercise. Les doy hasta las 11 para que los hagan. Por favor, estos dos ejercicios y lo verificamos con los que yo tengo. Vale. ¿Sí me escucharon? Perfecto. Sí, perfecto. Ok, so continue with the exercises, please. And let me know if you have any question. No matter, you know, no matter the question, I'm here to actually answer the questions you have. Just try to do your best.
you have four more minutes. You got one more minute. Okay, time is up. Who is going to participate? Who is going to give me the the answer for the exercise number five?
Anyone? Montoya, the answer for the exercise number five. Profe, no lo terminé. No, who, who finishes the exercise number five? You need more time. You need more time? Okay, I'm going to give you five more minutes. Don't worry, if you need more time, five more minutes you have until 11.8, okay, to finish it. So keep working then. I mean, I did it actually very fast, so I'm, I'm not expecting that you do, do it very fast because I already know, you know what I'm doing. So just keep working. Sorry, I got a question. Eh, si quería la respuesta del ejercicio 5. Yes. Ah, ok. Bueno, a mí me dio 2.740.6461. Could you speak a little bit louder because I cannot hear you? Perdón. Puedes hablar un, poco, hablar un poquito más, más, este, más alto porque no te escucho. Ah, este, me dio 2.740.6461. Ok, vamos a ver. Exercise number 5. 2.24 menos 2.24679. ¿Es that your answer? Algo así, no. Sí te dio, ¿verdad? So there you go. You got your answer. It's right. So we, we got the exercise number 5 completed. So keep working to finalize the exercise number six.
Okay, now it's 11.9. So you, you had five more minutes. Do you have the exercise number nine? The, the number nine, sorry. No, this is the session nine. The, the answer of the exercise or the example five. In my case, exercise six. Profe, lo estaba haciendo, pero me marca un valor como num y no me aparece el, o sea, el valor. Me acaba de salir el 5. ¿Five? Sí, apenas me dio. Es que estaba cometiendo un error a la hora de meter la fórmula. Pero yeah. ya lo descubrí. Those, ya, ya me da. Those numbers, those kind of things that like you, you get when you're doing something uh, operational incorrectly, you have to, you know, check your formulas. So, García Zárate, do you have the answer? Este, le había dicho el, el del siguiente ejercicio, profe. Yeah, yes. El, este, el, ese, el cuatro sí lo tengo bien, si me hubiera dado ese. Ok, and, and the next one? El siguiente es el que le había dicho que era 2.7406471. Ok, yeah, that's right. So, so... 2.74065, so we have the answer for the two exercises. So this is the answer for this, for the example number five. So remember that this is log-based thing. Remember, that's why I'm actually making this difference. So, and the starting guesses is zero and three. So if you get the zero, no, sorry, zero and three, well, zero and three, well, I actually modified this one, but if I say zero and three, so you get what something like this. So that's probably what you get from here. So in general, so if you actually use a point zero 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 one, so you just get the same thing because you have to be aware that you know there are no log of zero. I think is not correct. So if you go to logs base ten. So you get a mathematical error. So be aware of that. It's a tricky, it's a tricky question. So, but that's something that you might get and you won't be able to do it, but it doesn't mean like you cannot actually think through uh, deeply, right? So that's the exercise for the second method, okay? So do you have any question in general? Any more questions? Sí, profe, yeah. en este caso, ¿cómo podemos obtener los puntos iniciales? So, that's something that you have to guess. That's why they're guesses. But in general, as I said to you, so for example, you already have accumulated knowledge. You can plot it, you can know the answer, and then you can give actually some irrational guesses. Sí. Porque okay. en, los, en los otros métodos, Podía, igual era suponerlos, pero con, haciendo la gráfica, pues ya tenía un valor más o menos de qué, entre qué valor suponer. Yeah, it's pretty much the same here. Pretty much the same, tipo, so it's este exactly the same here. Tipo, no. o sea, aquí nos podemos basar precisamente haciendo la gráfica, ¿no? Entonces hacemos exactly. la gráfica y nos podemos dar cuenta en qué puntos. Exactly. You just have to provide two guesses. If you know that, for example, your solution is about 0.22, so you just provide guesses equal to zero and point two, and then eventually you're going to, you know, have convergency to the right answer. Okay, so it's exactly the same. So now, any more questions? Sorry, do you have any more questions? Nope. Anyone? No, profe, si me estaba dando la, los mismos resultados. Perfect. Very good. So in general, we, act, we can actually continue to the first modification of the second method. And this method is called actually the false position or regular falsity. So when, when it, when, for those that actually planning to take the extraordinary or the title exam, so remember that somehow I got a I got a, a student that he, he was doing the extraordinary and the ordinary or and the title. And I said regular falsy. And he said, Professor, we didn't see that, that example. We didn't see that method. And just remember that you know you have you can call it 
false position or regular falsity. Okay, there are two different names, but they are referring to the same method. Okay, it's like the Newton Brabson method. It's also called the Newton's method. So it doesn't mean like there are different methods. It's the same thing. Okay, so this method particularly is actually pretty much the same as the bisection method, but where the midpoint is replaced by a second method like approximation. So it's pretty much the same as the bisection method. Remember that the bisection, we just approximate by dividing by half and half and half, and you just make the interval actually very small so that you know we get the solution at the end. Regular falsity method is pretty much the same um, analogy. So we have to define the interval, which is actually A and B, and this interval has to bracket the roots. OK, so <clears throat> it's important. You have to provide as the question is um, we got in a few minutes ago, so you have to provide two guesses, an interval that you have to be able to what to be able to actually, you know, encompass or to bracket the roots or the root. OK, so the definition of the false position method is actually this one. So it's C, which is the in general, the C is going to become the new point is equal to A minus FA, then times A minus B divided by FA minus FB. So if you actually see this thing, so you'll see that they're actually pretty close to this formula, right? So the same thing as we were doing actually in the, in the, in the second method. So, so this is also equal to we actually multiply each each of them by each of them, so, you know, like this is B F A minus A F B divided by F A minus F B. So this is pretty much what we just have to do. As in the second method, but unlikely, like the second method, the new point is guaranteed to lie in the A and B. So what's the what's the thing about here? So this is improved. The false position method is an improvement of the second method. Because the second method doesn't guarantee that the root that we are providing is actually inside of the initial bracket that we want to approximate. Okay, that's a very important improvement. So regular falsity or false position method actually guarantee that the root lie in the interval A and B that you are actually providing as initial guesses. Since the points in this general, in general, A, A, and B, and B, A, B, F, A, B, lie on separate sides of the axis. So that's why if they are actually in separate side of the axis, so they're going to be able to be, you know, inside of the A and B. Remember when we were discussing that why the F, A times the F, B they were equal, they were, they actually were less than zero. The multiplication were always less than zero because they actually lied on separate x axis. So in general, if we go actually go to, let me just go to the, to make this clear, let me go to the, to the board. Because it's important for you to, to, to get to the, the definition of this. It's loading, so give it a moment. So now we have the board, right? So th this is the board. And then if we actually have the y axis and the x axis, this is x, this is y. And then we have a curve like this. So we should, we should, this, the solution is here, right? This is the solution, C. And if we present two different roots, A, A, and B, right? So in general, if you think about this here, always, always, F, A, in general, it's evaluated here, and if FB 
is evaluated now in here. So they're actually in different axes. So this is always in negative or this is always in positive. Or could be actually vice versa, right? But they are always, as long as the root is inside of the neighborhood A and B on the interval A and B, as long as they are inside of this interval, their roots or sorry, the, the evaluation of the FA and FB, they're going to be in opposite sides. So if we actually do the, an example like this, we go to this and then we get this one. So we will not find the solution. Why? Because in general, if I just say, OK, my neighborhood is this one. And is this one. So if I actually get the solution, this is A. This is B. What happened right here? So if A is this, this one. If B, if this one. But there is no there is no intersection with the x axis. So the definition of F A times F B is less than zero is actually not met here. But in this one, it's actually the condition is good. So that's why we said like they are in opposite axis as if the neighborhood AB evaluated in the function R and multiplied R less than zero. Okay, that's an important factor that you have to account for this um, regular policy method. We are also taking those definitions from the uh, fixed point iteration method and the bisection method. Okay, so we'll, I'm going to leave this. Um, Desconectar, profe. Veo que no está en la reunión. ¿Cómo? Veo que no está en la reunión, pero se sigue grabando. Ah, okay. Okay, so ah yeah. ok, perfecto, perfecto. No I think it's actually recording, but I got actually out of the meeting, so <laughs> I'm sorry about that. I hit the, the leave button and I, I should be able to, you know, to 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 keep the recording. I think it's still recording, right? So. So let's continue with the class. Let's go to the presentation. So um, let's go to the screen. Number one and then the presentation. So now we know why this is actually now a a a, if a and B if B is actually lying separate side of the axis X axis. OK, so the new interval either AC or CB is chosen according whether if a, if c, if a times f c less than zero of, or f c f b is less than zero. So it's going to be actually a decision. So if if we see that now, for example, I compute I have a and b, which are which are actually the initial conditions. So r is a bracket. So in general, I have to check this condition. So I compute c. And then if if F A F C is actually less than zero, so D C is gonna become become C B. Right? But if F C and F B is less than zero, then Z is gonna become A. So this is actually explained in something that we call a pseudocode. So this is a pseudocode. So given the interval A and B, which is the interval you are proposing in the exercise, so we have that, you know, the interval has to meet this condition. If A, if B is less than zero, right? And then I have a for, for loop that is going to run from one to n iterations. I compute the value of C using this formula. So if FC is equal to zero, so we stopped and we say this is done. 
because if this is this is true, it means like C is the root. In general, FC has to be equal. It doesn't have to be equal to zero in general. Has to be equal to 0 0.000006, for example, or 0 0.0001. This is going to actually become what we uh, what we name the limiting error. So this is important to 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 make sure of this is not going to be zero because this is going to be a very low value, but it won't be zero. So this is my first condition. If I compute C and FC or the function evaluated in C is equal to zero, I'm going to stop. And I'm going to say that Z is the solution. So if FA times FC is less than zero, of course, B is going to become equal to zero. Sorry to C. Because it means like now, now, now my, my, my bracket is going to be between FA and FC. Otherwise, A is going to become to C. So if this is not met initially, so of course the, this condition means like FA and FC is greater than zero or that F, FB times FC is less than zero. So in that case, A is gonna, be, is gonna become uh, equal to C. So, and then we're gonna just gonna keep working, keep working until this condition is met. But remember, this condition won't be equal to zero. This condition will be equal to something. Something like it's going to be 0.0001. It's going to depend on the precision you want to actually provide for, for, the, for, the, for the method. With that in mind, let's actually do one exercise. For example, we want to apply the false position method on an interval minus one and one to find the root of this polynomial, okay? So if we know that we know that this is going to be this, the function, the, the solution, this is the function, right? This is the function that we need to know. So, and then we, I just, what I did is just try to translate it to X version, right? So if you see here, B is my X version of this X, X1 and a is equal to x0. So you see it's this is fx0 and fx1. So it's pretty much the same thing. So if if I evaluate, so x1 is equal to what? To 1. A is x0 is equal to minus 1. So I provided actually a, a bracket. So I'm going to ask you, x1 is equal to 1. ¿Cuánto vale la función si le evalúan en menos 1? Por favor, evalúe la función en menos uno. Evaluate the function fx in minus one. Menos nueve medios. Sorry? Menos nueve medios. Exactly, minus nine halves or four, four, minus 4.5. So now, minus minus x0 x0 is equal to minus one right and then evaluate please the function in one cuánto vale la función si lo evaluamos en uno aquí sería uno menos dos más tres medios no cuánto da un medio un medio exactly so now we evaluate it, boom, 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 and then we we already know these values, so it's easy to do it. And then we have four fifths, or oh, four divided by five, of four. If you want to do it in decimals, it's actually four divided by five is equal to 0 0.8. So it's same thing, right? So now we have to check the condition. So remember that we have to check this condition, right? This one. So if I evaluate x0, this one, times the function evaluated in five, four, four fifths, so this is 
y, y less than zero. Vamos a evaluarla. Ya tenemos que la función evaluada en menos 1, que es este, da menos 9 medios. Ya la tenemos. ¿Cierto? Ahora, ¿cuánto da la función evaluada en 4 quintos? Me da 0.432. Ok. Si multiplicamos puntos, ¿punto qué? 0.432 por menos 1, ¿estoy en qué cosa? Es en un valor... Menos, menor a cero, ¿cierto? Porque es negativo. ¿Sí o no? Sí, profe. Sí. So, if this is actually meant, now the new bracketing interval, x0, is, is going to be x0, which is this one, comma x2. So, my new interval is going to become actually minus one, comma, point zero. And we redo the same thing. We do it again. And then, for example, here you have the, the, in, in the plots of how you, we do this. So the first one is actually, the first one we decided to do it was equal to one. And then the other one was equal to minus one, right? Minus one and one. So this is equal to one and minus one here. So this is the second. And then we move to then point one here. 0.8, this is the one. So we are just moving this one and this one. And then we're just moving the, we're just moving the line to the X axis and then eventually we're gonna, we're gonna get to this point, which represents, which represents, give me, give me a second, give me a second. Okay, which represents, um, represents the solution of the system, okay? So we have this, moving line, which is pretty much almost the same as the second method, but we are just moving to the X axis to obtain this final value. So if you see, as in general, I think this, the intersection is equal to zero, zero. So if the solution is zero, right? Because if you multiply zero, zero and zero, so the solution is going to be zero, right? So it's evident that the solution in this plot is going to be equal to zero. So we are moving this way. OK, so just to, to keep this in, in mind, OK, so if we actually compare this one here, so this is the same thing as just having this fixed point right here. This is equal to minus one and then we move to minus one. Then if we actually this met this one, we're just moving to this one. If we map to this one, we're moving to this one. So there is actually a very similarity between the second method and the false point position. So, but this one, this one is actually fixing the point and then it's just moving to the solution. In general, in this one, the second method, we are just moving, moving through the second and then we just meet that the tangent line is going to become the solution. But for this one, we are moving through the line, but we keep in one fixed as in the bisection method. So, but in general, both actually work very, very efficient. So, with that in mind, with that in mind, so the assignment number six, I think is the number, the assignment number six for you. What I want you to do is actually code the false position method in MATLAB or Octave or R, the one you prefer, and you have to solve the four examples seen in this class. I'm, I'm actually referring to these four examples, these four examples. You have to, you already know the answer, so it's going to be very easy to, if you're coding this in MATLAB, you're going to be able to know the answer. So what I want you to do is for the assignment number six, two, um, code the method of the false position in MATLAB, and then solve the four exercises that you have seen in the class. Okay. I won't do the exercise, you know, the, the exercise anymore because I think the method is actually the same, which is, oh, I, I put it here actually. These are the four exercises, but you're gonna do using this formula, okay? So do you have any question about your new assignment? So the assignment six actually, I'm asking you to code 
the false position method. You have to code this pseudocode. It's actually pretty straightforward. I can do it this in probably five minutes, but I won't do it. You can code the exercise and verify the exercise in MATLAB, in Octave, or in R. And you have to solve the four examples that we already saw in the class, which are these four exercises. ¿Qué quiero que hagan en español? Quiero que me hagan el código del false position method y que me verifiquen el código en estos cuatro, en estos cinco ejercicios. ¿Ok? Eso es lo que quiero de... Ah, esa va a ser la tarea, ¿no? Exactamente. Pero es que yo escuché que para el jueves. No, no, ¿verdad? No, no, no. no. Ah, perfecto. Okay. Es que yo escuché Is para next class y dije, ¿qué? <laughs> ok, ok, perfecto. Gracias. Either, either way, I think if I actually ask you the, the, this for the for Thursdays, you're going to do it because it's a piece of cake to actually do this. Es muy, muy sencillo hacer esto que, estoy, que le estoy pidiendo. Muy extremadamente sencillo. Pero como sé que lo van a hacer al final, no les voy a dar hasta el jueves. Entonces, no hay ningún problema. Ok, so that's the, the assignment. Do you have any question about this? Perdón. No escucho bien. Creo que dijo que si podría volver a poner la diapositiva de los ejercicios. Aquí están. De hecho, la voy a subir. Ah, ok, perfecto. Gracias. Eso no hay ningún problema. Voy a subir esto para que ustedes lo tengan. Pero todavía falta ver un poquito más. Pero lo vamos a ver el próximo jueves. Ya hasta okay. hoy tenemos una hora y media, creo que es suficiente para saturarlos y para que se pongan a trabajar en esta tarea. Entonces, la siguiente tarea solo sería sobre falsa posición. No haríamos este el, el otro no. método que acabamos de ver. <risa> Exactamente. Porque para la, siguiente, para la siguiente clase, una vez que veamos otros métodos, van, voy, les voy a mostrar, estos van a ser los ejercicios. Entonces... Todavía hay más ejercicios que tienen okay. que hacer. Para, para esta clase, nada más la tarea en este caso es la tarea 6. Creo que es la 6, si bien recuerdo. Entonces tienen que hacer el método de... La 7. La 7, entonces la 7 la cambiamos. Entonces tienen que hacer el método de falsa posición para... Eh, codificado. Me tienen que entregar el código y me tienen que entregar los, los eh, cuatro ejercicios verificados. ¿Ok? en su código, o sea, su código tiene que al final darme un, un, una leyenda donde me diga esta es la solución de este ejercicio, luego esta es la solución de este ejercicio, esta es la solución de este ejercicio y esta es la solución de este ejercicio. Y por supuesto me van a compartir su código, su script. ¿Ok? ¿Preguntas? Puede ser en MATLAB, puede ser en Octave o puede ser en R. Ah, ok. Este, solamente son las capturas del código, ¿no? No, me van a mandar el archivo del código porque yo quiero, voy ah, a poder correr el código. Claro. El código claro. tiene que ser suficiente para que yo lo coja y lo que haga es que yo lo pueda correr por mí mismo y pueda verificar que ustedes hicieron su tarea. Ah, o sea, entonces, me tienen que mandar el código y un archivo de PDF donde cada uno de estos ejercicios fueron resueltos con su código. No peguen el código aquí, solamente peguen el output que me avienta su código. Ah, ya, ya. Ok. Good. Any more questions about this? Nope. Yo pensé que era una mano. Nope. Not by hand. You, you can do it by hand, though, but you already know the answer. What I want you to do is actually to code this. Todo tiene que ser resuelto por el código. Y les vuelvo a repetir, esta fue la segunda tarea que menos me entregaron los alumnos. La primera fue el fixed, iteration, fixed point iteration method. Y esta fue la segunda tarea que menos me entregaron. No por la dificultad, porque se van a reír de qué tan fácil es. Pero como le tienen miedo a la computadora, pues lógicamente no lo hacen, ¿no? Ok, Loki. So, if you don't have any more questions, guys, so it's time to say goodbye. To say goodbye, because we already, um, well, we have one, one hour, 40 minutes. So, see you later, alligators. Have, have a good day. See you. Enjoy the rest you, of the day. Teacher. 
And if you have any questions, just let me know by the WhatsApp group or by Eminus, okay? Okay, perfect. Bye bye. I'm going to stop actually the recording right now for the other class and stop and then stop recording.